International Fraud Awareness Week is observed globally in the third week of November. This year, the event took place from 13th to 19th November and was used to raise awareness of incidences of fraud. It was marked with fraud prevention campaigns and education. Fraud is pervasive in every area of human lives and it is becoming more sophisticated and rewarding to the perpetrators as well as debilitating to the victims. This is why it has become necessary to educate the citizens on the ills of fraud and how they can protect themselves from it and if already a victim, what needs to be done. Thank you for joining us on The Eagle, a program that showcases the activities of the EFCC and gives you, our viewers, an opportunity to understand what we do and to contribute your quota in the anti graft fight. My name is Aisha Muhammad. I am Abdurashid Bawa. I stand against corruption. I call on every patriotic Nigerian to lend their voices in this crusade. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. Together we will make Nigeria great. The network of national anti-corruption institutions in West Africa, Nasiwa, is a regional network created by national anti-corruption institutions at the initiative of ECOWAS in 2010. It serves as a forum for exchange and consultation between national anti-corruption institutions in ECOWAS member countries. Nesiwa elected the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC as its president on Monday, March 21, 2020. At the first extraordinary general assembly of the network, which held in Niamey, Niger Republic, the executive chairman of the EFCC, Abdurashid Bawa, called for the ratification of key resolutions of the executive committee meeting. Abbas Abubakar Umar tells us more. National anti-corruption institutions in West Africa, Natsiwa, took giant steps towards strengthening commitment to tackle cross-border crimes as the extraordinary General Assembly of the network got underway in Niamey, Niger Republic. Welcoming members to the Assembly, the President of the Network and Executive Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdurashid Bawa, said the meeting was called to ratify key resolutions of the Executive Committee meeting which took place in July 2022 in Abuja, Nigeria, regarding the functioning of the network. Bauer said the extraordinary General Assembly of Natsiwa represent a significant step to strengthen efforts in the fight against corruption and associated crimes within the region. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our meeting today is not just an important day for our network, but also for West African region. Today, Natsiwa will take significant steps to strengthen efforts in the fight against corruption and associated crimes within our region. I therefore wish to appreciate members for making time out of their tight commitment to honor the invitation and attend this extraordinary General Assembly. He, however, regretted that Natsua member institutions from Mali, Guinea and Burkina Faso were not represented at the meeting due to the situation in their countries. Abbas Abubakar Umar reporting for The Eagle. The director, Nigerian Copyright Commission NCC, Port Harcourt Office, Collins Osundu Nweke, has called on the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC to throw its weight behind his commission in tackling intellectual property fraud. Nweke made the call in Port Harcourt River State when he paid a courtesy visit to the Port Harcourt Zonal Commander of the EFCC, Nwaneka Nwekeke. Golden Onwa reports on this and another story. According to the director, Nigeria Copyright Commission, NCC, Port Harcourt Office, Collins Osundunweke, the EFCC is a strong partner in fighting copyright crimes and enhanced collaboration between the two agencies who greatly boost the work of the NCC. He said that NCC is particularly interested in information and intelligence sharing. While identifying an intricate linkage among organized crimes, 
money laundering and copyright piracy. He called on EFCC to lend its voice to end plagiarism. He pointed out that intellectual property is now the new oil because while oil can dry up, human intellect will continue to generate creative things that would add more value to the nation's economy and attract more investments. Responding, Mokike stressed the need for accountable conduct and collaborative engagements as ways the nation can make progress in the fight against corruption. He stated that if everyone can stand for the right things, many things will be made right. And the only way to make progress is to collaborate and fight for the same cause to make Nigeria a better place. The commander promised that the EFCC was willing to continue in the existing relationship with the NCC. The executive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, has commended the validation process of the Risk Assessment Report on Exposure of Non-Profit Organizations, MPOs, to Money Laundering and Terrorism Financing, organized by the Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering, SCUML, describing it as timely. Bawa gave the commendation at the corporate headquarters of the EFCC while addressing stakeholders involved in the exercise. The chairman, who spoke through his chief of staff, Hadiza Zubairu Gamawa, said the seminar and the reports that came out of it came at a critical time when Nigeria is battling insecurity and insurgency. She stressed that the reports of the seminar would help to determine non-profit organizations and POs that are vulnerable to terrorism financing. The exercise is not just to satisfy the international requirement, but is a country decision taken to sanitize the system for the betterment of the work done and the betterment of everybody in Nigeria. It is also to ensure that the system can no longer be used for terrorism financing. In his welcome address, SCOMO's director, Daniel Issei, said the essence of the gathering was for stakeholders to sit and assess the report they have collectively produced, validate it, and announce it to the world. In her presentation titled, Findings of the Terrorist Financing Risk Assessment of the MPO Sector in Nigeria, the project coordinator, ACE Imbinabo Mary Amakri, advised countries to review the adequacy of laws and regulations that relate to MPOs and identify countries vulnerable to terrorist financing abuse. She advised them to also apply focused proportionate measures in line with a risk-based approach to MPOs in order to protect them from terrorist financing abuse. Golden Omura reporting for The Eagle. Fraud is defined as an intentional act of deceiving someone to secure an unlawful or unfair gain. Fraud is not only financial, it also includes identity theft, voter fraud, healthcare fraud, and more. Fraud is not a modern invention. Since antiquity, even before money was invented, people have been deceiving each other for personal gain. But in recent times, it has taken a monumental dimension such that many people have lost their lives because someone somewhere defrauded them. Last week, the EFCC joined other organizations to recognize the International Fraud Awareness Week. Ojo Chukutami Eche is standing by with our guest to discuss the International Fraud Awareness Week and issues of fraud as it affects every one of us. Good to have you on this segment of the program today. This is a special one because we are commemorating the 2022 International um, Fraud Awareness Week, which started on the 13th of this month and ended just last week on Saturday, which was the 19th of this month, 2022. And um, we are going to be discussing the week today. What exactly happened last week? How can we all fight corruption together? And what is about what is it about awareness creation in the fight against corruption or fraud generally we have discussing with us today assistant commander of the efcc ace ibrahim idris he is the deputy head of operations efcc um ac idris thank you so much for coming on the program today thank you thank you very much okay we're going straight to the core of the matter now um many people have discussed fraud or described fraud from their different perspectives from their own understanding now i'm going to ask you ac idris as a corruption fighter how would you define fraud you can define fraud as an intentional misrepresentation of material fact with the sole aim of gaining undue advantage 
intentional. It is intentional. You know that, yes, you, are in, you intend to defraud somebody because it has to be intentional. You have to be aware that the aim is to, is to gain undue advantage or to defraud somebody. So it has to be targeted. So um, by extension, we have what we call the fraud triangle. In the fraud triangle, you have, you have, you have pressure, you have opportunity, and you have um, rationalization. So the, the, the pressure is usually from, um, you can have it um, from, from within somebody, it can come from family members, it can come from, from friends. You know, the, the pressure to, to own something, maybe to own maybe a car, for example, you want to own a house, you don't have the means to own the house, you are just looking for how can you own the house by all means. Or is a peer pressure. You want to you want to be you want to feel alone. All of your friends has maybe they have houses or they have cars or they have something that you are really interested in. So when you cave into that pressure, then the next thing is you wait for an opportunity. When the opportunity presents itself, then you indulge. As soon as you indulge, then you rationalize it. You see, after all, everybody does it, you know, or, or I'm entitled to it. So this, this is the fraud triangle. I would like you to give us some examples of what constitutes fraud, how or what makes a thing fraudulent. Uh, from an investigative point of view in the EFCC, some of the fraud um, issues that we investigate. For example, you can have a, a presentation of um, dot check, issuance of dot check. You know, um, the issue of dot check is one of the clearest examples of fraud because when somebody issues the check, he knew that he doesn't have money in the account and he knew that he is not expecting money at that material time that he, he gave the check. So, and, the, and he has already taken a product or he has received services from the victim. And he issues the check. And the victim goes to the bank to present the check. And there is no money. And he has already taken value from, it for, from, from this victim. So that is one of the clearest examples of, uh, of, of fraud. Or you, one of the examples of fraud is also one of these Ponzi schemes that are going all around the place. You know, people are deceived, you know, with the, with, with, uh, they, they are lured with, with the fact that it's an investment um, scheme or it's an investment vehicle, or investment company. People are lured and their monies are collected from them for the purpose of investment and receiving return on investment after some time. But at the end of the day, this fraudsters collect the money with the intention to deceive or to, to and to defraud and and when you check there is nothing they are not selling anything they are not producing anything they are not doing anything at all they are just collecting these funds and diverting them for their personal benefit this is one of this is also an example of one of the fraud schemes that we we do here and we see almost every day on a daily basis the diversion of funds sometimes People collect funds from for, for 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 businesses. They want to partner with somebody. They they come out. They come to they, they meet people for 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 say um, for different businesses partnership and what have you. We just with intention to defraud them. Just with intention, and they divide the money for something else. Sometimes they collect the money for for business A or in in location A. In the, with the intention that they are going to do businesses in location A and they collect the money and use it for something else without the knowledge of the person that has given this money, without telling him all the issues around it so that he understands and knows that yes, this is what he is putting his money into. And at the end of the day, the business fails or the business does well and this person divides the money and goes with it. People take forged documents, forged title documents to banks to secure facility. That is also another example of fraud. The International Fraud Awareness Week is an opportunity for organizations and communities to come together to look at how far reaching the effects of fraud uh, can be. So what are these effects of fraud on individuals and in Nigeria as a whole? Mm. Okay, the effect of fraud, I will tell you from experience that um, 
um, part of what we do, we investigate some of those investment schemes. In one of our investigation, we have we were able to establish that Nigerians lost about 300 billion naira to fraud scheme within a period of two years. Now, in an economy like this, and these people that, that lost this t more than 300 billion naira to a fraud scheme, to a, to a fraudster, um, uh, to an investment scheme, you know, most of them are a small and medium scale businesses, they just do menial job. So when you take 300 and something billion from these people, you can imagine the multiplier effect, the effect it will have in the economy. People will suffer and you can see that um, already the economy is, is shrinking, you know, because of a lot of factors, we have a lot of some of uh, economic issues coming up. People are looking for how to invest their, their hand earned money and you, you get this chunk of people losing this amount of funds. So this is one of the if impact of the economy. It, it contributes to shrinking the economy because, because some fosters have taken funds uh, from maybe about 300 individuals. And those people doing their businesses, you can imagine how the business will crumble. The, the economy is run by individuals. It's run by corporate organizations. And and this corporate organization, you have individuals behind them because they make their living from these companies and entities. If they cannot make money from these companies and entities, then you can imagine their families, they cannot pay school fees, they cannot, they cannot eat three square meals as they used to, they cannot go and get uh, good um, health care individually. So these are some of the implications for individuals. Now, in November every year, the entire globe commemorates the International Fraud Awareness Week. This year, it's November 9, 13 to November 19. How does recognizing this week affect the work that you do in the EFCC? Yes, uh, for us at the EFCC, recognizing this week, um, one of the important things about it is we use this week to draw the attention of the public, for the public to be aware of fraud in the environment. We, 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 we organize um, public, uh, we organize lectures in places and we raise awareness with it. We, we, we draw the attention, we draw the, uh, the consciousness of Nigerians to be careful and uh, because uh, uh, we have a lot of internet fraudsters around and what have you. So we use this week to, to, to raise awareness and to reflect and to talk to people, you know, to be careful, to, you know, to, to safeguard their funds and what have you. Now, something keeps baffling me. I, I know that governments and um, a lot of institutions, private and uh, public, have, you know, been trying to push fraud to the wall. They have been campaigning against fraud, yet the monster keeps rearing its head. Um, AC Idris, where do you think this monster gets its strength from? Where do you think it, it gets its powers to be terrorizing these people? Why do you think it's on the rise? Okay, um, part of what we have seen that is um, giving room for fraud to take place in, in, the, in the organizations is lack of processes. You know, sometimes you will have a process in place, but lack of adherence to the process. People always want to cut corners. People always want to do things out of the normal, out of the laid down procedures. And you find out that um, in sometimes people take these actions, they do things out of the um, normal laid down procedure, and they are not punished. When there is no punishment, then definitely people will come back to it. People will like to do it. So, um, 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 part of it is, um, you see, one thing you find out in our society is that um, some people have lost their values. You will see that some people even pay for their children to cheat. They organize special centers for their children to write exams 
and cheat. And when such when such children grows up, grow up, what do you think they would they are going to do? They will feel it's a normal thing to do. They want to make money. They want to do this. They want to do that. So one, I think we need to follow our lay down procedures. It is very very important. If for a nation that doesn't have key procedures in place, they should put them in place and follow it up. And people should be punished for not doing the right thing. If you do that, I think it will, it will go a long way in curtailing the incidence of fraud and why fraud takes place in organizations. Okay, um, ACE Idris, the EFCC's work, among other things, is about fighting issues, fighting um, uh, fraud or anything related to fraud, wherever it's found. What are the challenges the Commission encounters in the process of carrying out its duties as an anti-corruption agency? Okay. Um, some of the challenges, you see, the EFCC is an agency that um, one of the things we do is to collaborate. We always collaborate with other government agencies, with institutions, with foreign bodies, and what have you so that our work will go smoothly. So um, um, part of the challenge is sometimes we don't get the cooperation we get we, we need enough cooperation that we need from sort from some of those departments and what have you. And um, um, even when you get the cooperation it is slow. When you request for information it's slow in coming. You know, you have to go there, sometimes you have to harass people um, sometimes you, you, you have to be emphatic, you know, you have to, you have to go there several Even banks, sometimes we need information about, about um, how finances flow, how money flows from account to account and what have you. Sometimes it's very difficult about getting those, those information. And there are a lot of challenges, like, like even resources. Do the EFCC get a lot of support from the government, but you know resources can never be enough. So, so those are some of the challenges that we face, really. In recognition of the International Fraud Week, AC Idris, um, what can people do? I want you to be specific now. Take it to Nigerians, take it to the government. What can everyone do so that fraud can be exposed and dealt with wherever it's found? Okay. On that one, um, you see, all the anti corruption agencies put together um, cannot do this anti-corruption fight alone. Nigerians has to take ownership to the fight against fraud and corruption. Nigerians has to take ownership with, on, of, of, this, of this issue. Otherwise, it will not go anywhere. So, um, what I will advise is that Nigerians should, should come out and support all the anti-corruption agencies, provide necessary information, work with us so that we'll make our country a better place. It's back to Aisha in the studio for the rest of the program. This is a disclaimer. The EFCC wishes to draw the attention of the public to some faceless individuals running fake and criminal EFCC pages on Instagram and other social media platforms. The EFCC has verified Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages with its logo and the blue badge clearly reflected. Any other contrived page of the Commission on any social media platform should be ignored. The Commission wishes to draw specific attention to fake EFCC Benin page, EFCC Kaduna page and EFCC Abuja page and a certain Abdul Rashid Gumel Buffa running another EFCC page on Instagram. All these faceless characters are operating their pages illegally and in flagrant violation of the sanctity of the legal identity of the EFCC. The Commission may take appropriate legal actions against them. We urge the public not to have any transactions with these characters. My people, ha! my name is a maker, make us come out. Let me get all this motor. I don't learn my lesson. Somebody come buy motor for my hand, carry big, big money, come give me. Now, when we get bust, now in my eye open. I don't know that 419 be. Now, when EFCC, bab him, now they come bab me too. Now, he make me, they warn you, all of them, now when they do business like me, where they carry big, big money, when I go, sometimes I go carry transfer, carry bring back. Yeah. 
make I shine in my eye because <laughs> the special control unit against money laundering, what they call SCUMO, they don't want to say if the money pass five million naira for individual, hey, no collect them. If he pass ten million naira for company, no collect them. Can I go where? Bank. If you not do them like that. 250,000 naira for every day where this offense happen <laughs> or they go suspend your license or they go cuckoo shut them down matter quota for your hand no talk say i no one you this message is from the economic and financial crimes commission efcc and this is where we draw the curtains on this week's episode of The Eagle. Don't forget that you can send an email to info at efcc.gov.ng and speak to our offices and representatives on 0809-3322644. And follow us on all our social media platforms at Official EFCC for all matters relating to economic and financial crimes. Use the EFCC mobile app, The Eagle Eye, to report any fraud you see happening around you. You download the app, you follow the steps and report fraud on the go and you can also take pictures of corrupt practices and upload them i am aisha muhammad leaving you with this parting words that says integrity is the ingredient that will enable you to forge rapidly ahead on the highway that leads to success we can be truthful and maintain our integrity in our personal dealings let's stand for integrity let's do the right thing always goodbye god bless nigeria Please do stay safe, be kind to yourself and to others, and do enjoy the rest of the week.